Today we're going to be doing something that's going to be a little controversial, but it's a question that we have had since we opened this shop. Did Eastman build a better D18? We're going to find that out today, all encompassing. Be ready for it right after this. Oh, it's fair well, here we are, Jeremy. Uh, this has definitely been a question uh, since we opened the shop. And our first guitars it. were Eastman guitars. I remember maybe our second or third year, uh, Eastman was kind of a newer brand, especially in our, our bluegrass world. And we did a special Eastman event at the store where we set up a curtain and we hit it and we said, bring in your favorite guitar. It could be a Martin, a Taylor, whatever it is. And we're going to go behind the curtain and play a comparable Eastman and that one. And then just have people randomly, you know, not vote randomly. On it. Pick, yeah, vote which one sounds the best without you seeing what's on the headstock. And it was it, very it, interesting. It fared very well. Yeah. But I think we, this is a chance to kind of get that to the entire internet. Do the same sort of thing, asking the question, does Eastman build a better or a comparable version of the D18, yeah. and you can kind of go into some of the differences in the specs, but I know for a while uh, in Acoustic Guitar Magazine that was listed as like the number two guitar um, or number one guitar out there for acoustic guitars ahead of the D18, so we're going to kind of look into that ourselves. Yeah, before we get into all those specs, so I definitely want to encourage you, if you have not done so yet, please hit that like button, comment down below, and also, man, the most important thing, you got to subscribe. This is where you'll be uh, able to know about all the cool content that is coming to you from this channel. Uh, so much cool stuff that we're doing here lately. Some cool stuff time. coming up that's uh, top secret stuff that you're going to want to know about, so make sure you interact with us. That's the other cool thing about uh, YouTube. I've been reading about this. Really? If people interact, YouTube thinks, oh, these guys must be doing something that people like. So make sure you interact, and then we'll trick, Maybe we'll they trick are. YouTube into thinking Maybe they're that people not. like it. I don't know. Anyway, it is, uh, it is a big question, and Eastman has just definitely exploded onto the, uh, the guitar stage, and they're doing it by comparing themselves to standard guitars. And the D18 from Martin has been a just a standard dreadnought. That's what everybody thinks of when they think of mahogany guitars. Yeah. And uh, for a long time, what we saw in the E10D was a very comparable guitar to the E, or sorry, the uh, D18 Golden Era, no longer being built, but spec-wise, extremely close. Adirondack spruce top, uh, mahogany back and side, scallop bracing, uh, just a really great uh, overall dreadnought guitar. Same basic dreadnought body shape and size. And then the other comparable guitar, which was actually my first guitar uh, to the Eastman line, this is the very first guitar I ever bought way before we opened up a store, was the E60, which I've got behind me right now. That one has a Sika spruce top with the mahogany back and sides. Now there's definitely a few difference, and the new version of the Martin D18 has come a long way from what it was 20 years ago. Those guitars had no scallop bracing, they were not forward shifted, they didn't have near the power and uh, sound of the modern day D18, and I really do think that Martin has really stepped up their game. And maybe it's because there's been so many great companies that have copied their ideas. And again, I know this is gonna be controversial because a lot of you are like, why are we comparing something to, why not just to buy a Martin? Yeah. And, just and buy a Martin. Let's, let's give credit where credit's due. It, the, the fact that every, just about every guitar builder, acoustic guitar builder, has the Martin design in their head when they're building their guitars, says a lot for the brand. Same thing with Gibson, we've talked about this with Gibson mandolins. All the other builders are emulating the, the F5 mandolin. The same thing with the Dreadnought guitar. The D18 and the D28 is kind of that standard bearer that everyone's trying to uh, build up to. And then some guys that are in the boutique world are seeing if they can take it a step further. But this is the, the OG, if you will. I'm with you. And I think there's a, I'll, I'll coin a phrase, one of the greatest forms of flattery is uh, to try to copy it. Is that true? I don't, think, that's exactly I don't right. think some of these companies agree. I don't know if you've seen some of the lawsuits from upset, these but. companies. They don't necessarily agree with you on this, Jer. Um, but it is something to kind of take into uh, to account here. Uh, and I want to cover this first and foremost. For all of you absolute Martin enthusiasts, I am one. Uh, Jeremy is one. You own a D18 Golden Era. I own a uh, D18. I've had HD28s, D28s. I've had a lot of guitars. I love Martin guitars. I'm not saying nothing against him but i also want to put out there that there is certain eras of martin guitars in the d28s hd28s they are totally different like 
I'm sorry, but I'm not a huge fan of the 70s, 80s. I'm not even a huge fan That's of the 50s and 60s. not played some good ones, but just consistently. I, I agree. Uh, yeah, I played some great ones. Played a lot of them that I did not care for very much. And there are oh, so many differences, which is to be expected. The Dreadnought came out in the 30s. Uh, early 30s. Uh, that's a long period of time to have a lot of changes that have happened throughout its uh, existence. And now we're kind of back towards that original design now with the modern day uh, D18 and HD28. Yeah. Um, and I will also point out that there's been some major changes also, by the way, in From Eastman. Eastman yeah. um, the original E6 that I have is not the same as the E6 we have right now uh, behind us. I have an E10D that is not the same as this guitar. They've done some changes and they've had some very big uh, influences now with the combination with bourgeois guitars. They've changed a lot of how they brace, how they kind voice, it. and uh, have changed that overall sound. So it's almost sound like they're kind they're... of diverging again now that they've kind of grown as a company. And I'd almost, I will actually come out and say this in the front end of this, I would say there's more of a difference between the modern Eastman guitar and the modern DA-18 now than there was when we started 10 years ago. I would say there's a bigger, much bigger difference. And that's from both companies, like you said, Martin yeah. going back to some of their roots with that, and then Eastman taking Meaning on some more of this modern boutique. Boutique sound. Tone. Correct. But the big thing to kind of uh, take into note here is that an E10D uh, will sell for around $1,350, whereas the E6D will now sell at $10.99, and a modern-day D18 will sell at $27.99. So there's still quite a bit of savings. And even if you think it's comparable, maybe that money difference is a big difference. Maybe you prefer a more boutique type of sound. Maybe you prefer the more traditional uh, and the US aspect build. and the U.S. build in a uh, Martin guitar. I have a feeling we are going to see a big bunch of comments in here. We're going to hear some arguments. We're going to hear some people who Keep are going civil, to state their civil. opinions all the way through. So I think the best way to kind of cover this is literally let's do a blind test Set where we curtain. just play it and we see which one of these guitars comes out your favorite and our favorite. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, three guitars. You can take the glasses off now, guys. We're going to reveal. <laughs> some of you may just put some Vaseline on your lenses and just, you know, I can't tell which one Cover it is. Cover your screen in Vaseline. <laughs> yeah, that's no, a that, great that, idea. I like doing those comparisons because it does kind of take out the, the biases or biases of what you might have thought you, you liked ahead of time. Um, I thought there were some distinct differences between those. Absolutely, there's some differences. And, I, and it's... Uh, in my opinion, it's a good thing. I almost feel like now that they have diverged more than what they did before, I think it's actually a good thing. It's giving a, uh, a balance and a different kind of sound. Um, I think that uh, a lot of players now are kind of leaning on more modern sounds, although there are some of us that are all still into more of a traditional sound uh, out of these guitars. And uh, that's definitely being shown. And there's room um, in the market for, for both. There is. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, obviously the Martin sounds like a Martin. It has got become more so bottom heavy, thick in the low end. Um, but 
but definitely more round in the top end and missing some of that sparkle. It doesn't have the definition or that forward thrusting punch that we've seen from more of the boutique guitars of late. Um, and this now, one maybe a little bit closer to that. It's got a little bit more of that clarity and punch to the notes. I definitely see more of a, a, a frontward attack with that guitar. Um, you know, and I, I like that. I mean, I, I think for miking and running in a, a studio setting, I tend to prefer a little bit of that. But there's just something also about the depth that comes out of this. Uh, now, I will say, just in the player's uh, situation, the new modern uh, Martin Neck, a little bit thin in the profile for what I like, even though it is an inch and three quarters. There's not a whole lot of guts here, so I feel like I'm not really getting to hold as much. Um, setup wise, they're beefier on the Martin, uh, a little bit less so on uh, the most of the Eastman setups these days. I think there's a lot of comparisons. I think there's a lot of variances. I think both of them are great guitars. There's times that I would love this a little bit more. There are times when I would actually prefer the more modern punchy sound, especially with an Adirondack spruce top. The Sitka spruce with the thermo cured uh, also gave it a pretty cool depth and a little bit more uh, mid-range, which I think is great. Now, uh, in the near future, we won't see any of these just plain Adirondack tops They're from Eastman. They're all gonna be thermo cured from now on. So, guys, it's all up to you. I mean, we're talking almost $1,000 I think the great takeaway from this is here. there's some really good options for you wherever you're at financially or the sound you're looking for. I think it's, like you said, a, probably a better thing that they're kind of diverging a little bit from following the same exact path that Martin is doing. Martin get a little bit more to what they were known for in that fuller tone with the scallop racing. Eastman now doing a little bit more of the Dana Bourgeois sort of voicing that he, he's been training their staff on. So I think it, it, it opens the market up even further. I agree. I You know, there's there's responsiveness. There's some liveliness that's there that doesn't exist here. There's uh, some depth and openness, fullness. Yeah, openness and fullness that doesn't exist over here. I don't know. I can't tell you what I love. I just know that they're both great guitars. But you guys, I know you could tell me what you think. Put it in the You're comments gonna. down below. <laughs> Fill it up with all your comments, but be civil. Other every, Everybody's got different strokes for different folks. There you go. Absolutely. Anyway, we will catch you on the next video where we will decide which is the better guitar. I don't know. We don't have a really anything Who's the better, better guitar player, me or John? Ooh, that's Find out in the one. next video. Blind challenge. If you guys uh, want to, you should check out this other video that we did uh, a little while back where we did another blind challenge. We're into the blind challenges, and that is uh, a blind challenge on which Madagascar rose, Rosewood guitar is the best. Uh, you can check it out right here. Click this little link here, and I think you'll have fun with that. We will see you on the next video. Adios.